This video was brought to you by Indently.io. Learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be exploring some of the new features that PyCharm has added to their IDE. And they've actually added a lot of features, but I'm only going to be discussing the two that I found quite interesting. And the first one is called Sticky Lines. And I'm sure a lot of other code editors have some plugins for this, but when I saw this, I just couldn't help but think this is awesome. So to show you what it is exactly, I'm going to import random, not because we're going to use it, but because we're going to go to that module. And inside this module, we're going to get all the documentation for how it works, and we might even be able to see a bit of the functionality if it hasn't been hidden. But let's scroll down to the class declaration. So here we have a class called random, the one that we usually use. But now watch what happens when we continue scrolling. This class sticks to the top, so we can understand that we are actually inside the class. And this is a crazy change. I didn't even know I needed this until I saw it, because now no matter where we go inside the class, we'll know that we're still inside this class and it only adds one line to our code editor. So that makes it very easy to keep track of indentation and to keep track of where we are, especially if you have these huge classes. But there's something else to note. As soon as you enter a method, that sticky line will be added to the top. So now we know that we're inside the class, inside that function. And as soon as we move on to another function, that's going to stick to the top. So personally, I just think this feature is awesome because every time I'm creating a class, I usually have a huge problem with making sure that the indentation is on the correct level. Many times I will create a method inside another method, or I'll even create a method outside of the class by accident because I'm just so far down in the class. But now with these sticky lines, it just becomes so much easier to understand what's going on. And this also works with inner functions. As soon as you scroll into one of the inner parts, such as a method inside the class, it's going to stick to the top. So that was the first cool update that I thought you guys should be aware of. And just so you know, because I know a lot of you ask, I'm using PyCharm Community Edition, not the professional version, the Community Edition. It's more than enough for what I do in Python, and it's completely free. And it's also important to note that this is the 2024.1 version. So if you haven't updated to this version, you're probably not going to see this feature. But now let's move on to the second feature that's quite cool. And this one is still experimental, or in other words, it's in its beta phase. So next, let's open up the terminal. And the terminal opened up quite high. But what you should notice is a new color scheme. The venf, or the virtual environment, is in green. And that's because we're using a new experimental terminal. And I'll just move the camera up there because this is not activated by default. You're going to have to go to these three dots and type in enable new terminal, which is in its beta phase, as I mentioned earlier. And just to compare it to what we had earlier, I'm going to disable that and you'll see we're just going to have a normal terminal here. But let's re-enable that and it keeps on creating new terminals. I don't need those. So we'll go back here or actually I did like the new one because it was in bigger text. And for some reason, it doesn't grow with my font size, which is quite annoying. So we'll just keep local to as the new terminal. Anyway, that's a lot of nonsense. What I want to discuss in here is the autocomplete feature. Right now inside the terminal, if you were to type something such as pip, you'll start to see some autocomplete. So pip, and I actually messed up. I didn't mean to press enter, pip, space, install and we can do something such as requests or use one of the recommendations that it gives us. We're now finally getting recommendations for the terminal. And at this stage, I actually find it really annoying. I don't know why it just doesn't feel as smooth as using a basic terminal, but I can see this being very useful in the future, especially for someone like me who makes a lot of typos. I can really see this being useful. And this also works very nicely with Git. So you can type in Git, add, let's say everything, something like that, or even Git commit. It's going to give you those recommendations and hopefully that will lead to less typos and more consistent typing. So commit and blah, 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 whatever. Or actually you would have to add a message, I guess. Hello world, something like that. And actually there's only one more thing I want to show you here and that's if we were to run the script directly. So here I'm going to type in hello world 
And now that we have that line of code, we can run our script by typing in Python 3.12 main.py and running it. The final change is that it actually puts that code or puts that output in a small highlighted window, which is quite convenient because sometimes it's very easy to get lost inside all of that clutter in the terminal. Let's do maybe something such as for i in range 10, print hello world, which is a very realistic real life scenario. But the next time we run this, we're going to have it encapsulated inside this window, which in my opinion is very convenient. It's very easy to read and it's very easy to find out where the output actually went. I am actually very curious to see what an exception looks like with all of this. So raise exception and we can run this script one more time and it's going to look like that. Now we have the exit code all the way to the right, which is quite interesting. And the window is highlighted in red and you can also select these. That's pretty cool. But yeah, now we have this new terminal. Although I'm one who rarely uses the terminal because I just like to use the quick shortcut in PyCharm that runs the code directly, which brings it to its own run window, which is slightly different than the built-in terminal. But yeah, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know if there's any other functionality you found really interesting or that you found very cool with this update. My favorite one is still the sticky lines because again, it makes it very easy to keep track of what you're doing and will definitely help prevent me from making silly indentation mistakes. But yeah, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.